So let me tell you a story. When I was in my early 20s, I was working as a youth pastor at a church, and in keeping with my, what I'll call, progressive and innovative personality, others have called it rebellious, um, I decided to throw a food fight for an outreach event. And the thing was heinous. I'll tell you, I spent the following two weeks blowing flour out of my nose. My wife called an intervention wondering if I had a drug problem. The thing was wild. And at the event, the dad of a student who was there found out that I was in charge. And he clearly didn't agree with my innovative decision making. And he asked me what exactly my job was. A fair question when you're refereeing a food fight. To which I responded, I'm the student pastor. And he said, so you're like a pastor in training, like you're studying to be a pastor? And I said, no, 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 I'm a pastor to students. And he paused, clearly having some skepticism about the viability of my career choice. And then he said something to me that I'll never forget. He said, do you think one day you ever wanna be a real pastor? To which I replied, I don't know, I'll ask your son if one day he ever wants to be a real person and get back to you. And I think that that conversation unfortunately paints a picture of the posture of the church over the last 20 years. We didn't really care about the next generation. The next generation didn't really matter. The reason that we call the next generation the now generation is because somehow we missed the last generation. We missed millennials. Millennials aged, born 1981 to 1996, aged 23 to 38, now represent the largest living population in the American workforce. One in three people in the American workforce is a millennial. By the year 2025, 75% of the American workforce will be millennial, which means miraculously somehow we found a way of crawling ourselves out of our parents' basements and getting jobs. (laughs) Almost all of them. Now let me tell you our tragic, barbaric, brutal mistake. Let me show you how we failed. 59% of millennials raised in a church have dropped out and no longer attend. 35% of millennials have an anti-church stance, many of whom think the church does more harm than good. And here's the statistic that's really staggering. Only two in 10 people under the age of 30 consider attending church important at all and all time low, which leads me to believe that there is an entire generation out there who are shaping our present and our future who do not know about the scandalous love and unrelenting grace of King Jesus. What is going to be our response, Stone Creek? In the year 2017, Forbes magazine did a study And they said that Sandy Springs, Georgia is ranked as the number 10 place in the entire country for millennials to live. So Stone Creek, we're going to Sandy Springs and we're going for a generation. We're going for a generation who's been forgotten and overlooked and who researchers have called the lost generation. We're going because the perimeter needs, desperately needs a church like ours. We see an unapologetically Jesus-centered church for a generation of people who are burnt out on legalism and tired of religion. I've got friends who are millennials who grew up in this generation who say, I haven't given up on God. I just feel like the church gave up on me. Not our church, we're gonna be a church that fights for relationship with people who are isolated and alone in an online world. We're gonna be a church that fights for the doubter and the skeptic and the cynic and the sinner to have a place at the table to know that they matter. We're gonna fight to create environments to talk, to courageously step into conversations that the church has avoided, to step into the most delicate, intimate parts of the human experience that make people question whether or not there is a God. We're going to go to to determine to disciple a generation, equip a generation that we previously just tried to entertain. 
We're going to elevate the conversation to talk about stuff that matters, to elevate the dignity, the value, the worth of people, all people from all walks of life, all races and all colors, all ages. Then we're going to elevate the name of Jesus so boldly, so aggressively, so transparently, and so sacrificially that an uninterested world must take notice. We're going to Sandy Springs and we're going for a generation to wake them up to the wonder of Jesus. And so where do we go from here? We need you. I need you. My wife and I, we're selling our house. We're moving to Sandy Springs. We're uh, gonna brave the traffic, uh, uh, agree to run the Daytona 500 to go to the grocery store, right? We're saying yes to it because we believe that there's a generation that matters and I need gray hairs to come fight the war on wisdom with me. I need other millennials come, to come model for my friends what it looks like to follow Jesus. And so here's your next step on September 15th. We're having our first core team interest meeting. And if you're brave enough, if you're daring enough, if you want to be the early church enough, we're looking for some people who want to go on the wild goose chase of following Jesus. We don't have a building, but we've got a dream that God wants to reach a generation. And if you want to come be a part of building that from the ground up, then, then man, be there September 15th for that core team interest meeting. And the second thing is this, on September the 29th, we're making the bold decision to move church off of Sunday, off of this location, and we're going to have our inaugural church service in Sandy Springs. But the second part of that is that we're gonna have a city serve day where we get to serve this opportunity dropped in our lap to serve at the largest event in the city, the Sandy Springs Festival. We get to be the lead volunteers and show this city that we love them before we ever put on church services. There is a real generation full of real people who really matter to God, who really need you to step up. And this morning I got the call at 4.45 a.m. that my grandfather, who's been sick for quite some time, was fading fast and that I needed to go to the hospital. So I hopped in my car and I went to St. Joe's and I saw my grandfather, who's the only living spiritual legacy that I would have, any spiritual heritage comes from him. He's been in the same church for 30 years. A new pastor recently stepped into that church and he's seen that church grow and thrive. He's seen that church get old and die. And he looked at that pastor and he said, I would do whatever it takes to rally the troops, to rally the seniors, because I believe it's my responsibility to pass off the church to the next generation. And on the day that I have to stand before you and ask you to fight for the generation, my grandfather ends his fight and goes to be home with Jesus. What will your legacy be? How hard will you fight? Will you courageously go? Let's fight for a generation.